We started the first segment with a picture, so I thought, well, let's do it again this segment. It was Dingus Day in South Bend last week, which kind of symbolizes the start of the political season in the state of Indiana. A lot of candidates show up to talk shop, including the governor, who had to negotiate his way around a fire Mike Pence sign on his way into the building. And there's another sign, Pence uh, must go, billboard in downtown Indianapolis. I think it's on New York Street, but I'm not certain about that. So, Mark, what is going on here? Is the governor in trouble? No, I do not believe that uh, what you see here is anything more than people expressing their First Amendment rights. Um, the governor has an excellent record, 4.7% uh, unemployment, the lowest in the Midwest. We've got a surplus. Uh, all the rating agencies declare AAA bond rating uh, consistently. Indiana is ranked in the top 10. Um, and we get the luxury of uh, investing a billion dollars to maintain the roads we have and finish what we uh, are working on. So I think the governor has a great record uh, to run on coming into this election. Rob, Robin, I have to say, as I watch the governor, he's taking a lot of heat for some of the things he's done, but at least he's running. Where's John Gregg? John Gregg's all over the state. Come on and go with me. I mean, uh, John Gregg's all over the state and uh, meeting with folks to raise money, to get his positions down. But quite frankly, Kevin, whether you're in New Carlisle, whether you're in Lagodi, those signs that you see that say Fire Mike Pence are all over the state. But a couple things about John Gregg. First of all, I know I did hear he wants to be like Mitch Daniels. How's that going to play in the Democrat Party? Well, he wants to win. So that's, what, that's one way that he wants to be like Mitch Isn't Daniels. Isn't he right to life? John Gregg has had a long time record of being a pro-life So is that candidate. abortion bill in the legislature going to play here? He said he would have voted against it in the General Assembly and he would have vetoed it as governor. What do you make of all this, Dr. Laura? Well, generally it seems like kind of a low-key election. I yeah. wish we had more attention to it, and I, I keep laughing. I say, like, oh, it's Pence Greg 2.0 because it's, it's 2012 all over again. <laughs> I think there was more attention in 2012. I felt like the campaigns were doing a little more, and I'd like to see more excitement around it, although we do have our hands full with presidential, Senate, oh. congressional race. Maybe, maybe I'm asking too much to have a really exciting gubernatorial race as well. But it's the perfect storm, though. Everything's going on here. Now, we want to talk a little bit on the race for United States Senate on the Republican side, especially Marlon Stutzman versus Todd Young. Stutzman tries to keep Young off the ballot in Indiana. Young chastises Stutzman for buying a house and living the good life in Washington, D.C. Baron Hill just waits to see who comes out of this. What do you think? Lay back on the rail. You know, that's all you <laughs> do. You just, just lay back, you know, close up, <laughs> let, let them hit, let them punch, uh, punch themselves out, and then win in the fall. I mean, Baron Hill has had statewide experience. He's not, he didn't win the last time he ran. But, right. you know, with people in their party fighting, I don't know, you know, it's going to be interesting to see election night if people even get along with each other in the party. So oh, that'd we'll, be interesting. we'll get through the primary and we'll be ready in the fall. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Look, we, I think we have two quality candidates. Uh, Todd Young has been uh, leading the fundraising uh, battle. Uh, Marlon Stutzman's doing a great job on the Grassroots Network. He's kind uh, of the outsider this time. Is that going to play for him, Stutzman? Yeah, uh, but Marlon also has a record in Congress, too, so not too far outside. And um, uh, Todd Young, on the other end of that equation, has beat Baron Hill in the past when he was in Congress. Which so. I think Baron Hill probably, what, is he, is, he cam is he rooting for Stutzman here? No, I don't, no, I don't know that. First off, um, Baron Hill lost in a congressional seat. That's a lot different than statewide. Yeah. Gary, Chicago, Hammond were not in that congressional seat. So that would make a difference in our vote. But also, you know, look, Baron Hill saying let the president have a vote on his nominee for the Supreme Court. Let's address some issues now, and, and these guys are not doing it. Last but certainly not least, we have another interesting race I want to talk about. That's We have Trey Hollingsworth, who's running for United States Congress in Indiana. Some people may just see this as a political ex uh, experiment. A man from Tennessee running we for Congress in Indiana. Indiana. His television commercials are everywhere. Now. He moved to Indiana to be closer to his wife's parents, except if he wins, I think he moves to Washington. So I don't know if she goes with him or what the deal is there. But Trey Hollingsworth running a congressional campaign. Is this a political science? experiment? Uh, it could be, although it might be an experiment gone wrong. I, I think a lot of times when you elect someone, you want them to represent you and be from your area, have the same values that we do as Hoosiers, and so I'm not sure that this is going to necessarily be successful, but it certainly is interesting and entertaining. Self-funded. Self-funded, I believe. I think the most interesting congressional race we have, uh, how will Republican voters respond to a newcomer to Indiana uh, who is self-funding? Uh, we also have some very quality candidates. The attorney general's running in that race, mm -hmm. uh, two state senators. Um, so uh, uh, Laura's right. Uh, 
will, will uh, this person feel like he knows Indiana and he's responsive to the question? Okay, down to just seconds. Robin, well, you've been around. What well, do you make of this? What, what I make of it is that the hierarchy of the Republican Party is now worried about holding the House. I mean, the question will be, will they, will they be proud to run with Trump in the fall? If they're not, Shelley Yoder, who is a, a sitting elected mm -hmm. official in Monroe mm -hmm. County, will be the congressperson from that district. <laughs> All right. Well, we are just a month away from Indiana's third pri May 3rd primary. And by the way, the last day to register to vote in that primary, if you've not registered, is Monday. So be sure to do it. Thanks to Dr. Laura and Mark and to Robin. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.